Hello and welcome back to my channel. In today's session, we will look at some scenario-based interview questions for the AWS Lambda service. Now in AWS, whenever we talk about serverless, like you know, compute resources, uh, and you want to go with the serverless approach, then Lambda is a service that you have. And again, this is a very important service that you have, something that is very commonly used across the IT industry. And you can definitely ex expect some uh, interview questions from this particular service. So whether you're preparing for an interview or you're just eager to enhance your skills on the AWS Lambda service, then this video is just for you. Once again, before I start off with the session, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. So the first question we have is, suppose you have a requirement to process files as they're uploaded to an S3 bucket, how would you use AWS Lambda to achieve this? So for this, uh, you will need to basically set up an event uh, notification at the uh, S3 bucket. So as and when your users are uploading data to the bucket, uh, which is an event, uh, it should trigger an AWS Lambda function. So you will need to set up this S3 uh, event notification in the S3 service and uh, integrate that with your Lambda function whenever a file is uploaded to your S3 bucket. Now, this Lambda function can, can be anything, whatever you want to process, could be uh, resizing an image, could be parsing a log file based on your use case. So by using this uh, Lambda in this way, the process is completely serverless and it scales automatically based on the file upload frequency. So you don't have to worry about uh, scheduling the Lambda function or anything. As and when the uh, objects are uploaded to S3 bucket, it will automatically trigger the Lambda function and then based on what you have written in the Lambda function, uh, it will execute that code accordingly. The next question we have is how would you optimize an AWS Lambda function if cold start times are impacting performance? So basically your uh, cold start can uh, increase the latency to so to minimize this cold start latency we can uh, uh, make use of provisioned concurrency now basically what this does is it helps you to keep a specified number of instances warm so basically in the standby mode and whenever lambda needs it uh, it can make use of make use of this warm instances additionally you can also consider optimizing your function code uh, that could be removing any external dependencies or minimizing those external dependencies you can also consider using lambda layers effectively to maybe handle shared libraries so maybe you have some uh, common code that you have defined in multiple lambda functions so instead of defining that piece of code again and again and again you can make use of lambda layers which helps you to kind of uh, create a shared library and then you can start importing them uh, within your lambda function so that we can optimize your uh, code for any performance critical functions you can also choose to uh, run these functions uh, within a vpc and also minimize the number of libraries as much as possible and initialization work done within the handler function itself. So you can consider all these things. The next question we have is your application experiences unpredictable spiky traffic patterns. How would you ensure AWS Lambda can handle this? So Lambda has the capacity to automatically scale based on the traffic. So Lambda service is well suited to handle any spiky traffic pattern. So Lambda services, since it's serverless, it will automatically scale up and scale down based on the demand. However, if you still want to um, um, uh, see uh, as to you know uh, how you can do this, you can check and if necessary, increase the concurrent execution limit for your Lambda function. You can also consider using CloudWatch metrics to monitor any alerts to you know, basically monitor your con con concurrency usage and adjust the configurations accordingly. So basically uh, make use of your concurrency uh, and then monitor those concurrency usage like you know if it is high then you can adjust the configuration and if it is low you can um, uh, reduce the uh, concurrency limit as well so basically you can do this but lambda to a certain extent it is uh, intelligent enough to automatically scale up and handle this uh, uh, spiky traffic for you the next question we have is how would you manage database connections from aws lambda to an rds database in a high traffic scenario so managing connections from a Lambda service can be challenging since your Lambda function scales horizontally and that can potentially over help whelm your RDS database connections. So instead of managing the connections from Lambda service, you can consider using Amazon RDS proxy. 
and uh, this will help you to pool and reuse your connections and that way can reduce the impact on lambda's scaling ability on the database now this approach will help you to reduce the latency and also help you to improve the lambda's ability to manage the connections efficiently so basically uh, rds provides you this rds proxy option you can utilize that to uh, uh, reuse the connections uh, uh, so that your lambda can uh, provide you a better um, uh, um, functionality the next question we have is you have a lambda function processing messages from an sqs queue but occasionally it encounters errors how would you handle errors and uh, retries now aws lambda is designed to automatically retry up to two times for any in synchronous um, invocations um, however you can configure a dead letter queue in the sqs service so sqs provides you this option of a uh, dead letter queue and uh, this is where all of your failed messages can be stored and uh, these are the messages that needs manual intervention additionally you can make use of the cloudwatch uh, service to basically capture the logs and um, metrics of this uh, errors you can set up alerts for any high error rates to investigate the recurring issues and then handle them proactively so uh, make use of your dead letter queue so that the messages are not lost and you can process them manually uh, also you can set up your monitoring to see uh, what is the frequency what is the recurring issues that's happening so that you can start handling them in a better way the next question we have is a lambda function requires more than the maximum 15 minutes of execution time to complete a task what order what alternative approach would you consider so by default aws lambda has a five, 15 minute limit execution right so uh, you cannot execute a lambda function for more than 15 minutes but what if you have a piece of code that needs to run more than 15 minutes in that case you can break down the tasks into smaller parts so basically uh, create multiple lambda functions for example you can trigger separate lambda functions in a step-by-step -step process and for this you can make use of this another service which is aws step, step functions and this will help you to orchestrate the execution of your functions now this approach allows me to manage and monitor each step of your uh, execution uh, you can see the retry uh, you can retry any failed steps and avoid hitting the lambda time limit so basically the point is break down the lambda functions into smaller functions and then uh, sequence them to execute one after the other by making use of your step functions the next question we have is you have an api gateway endpoint integrated with an lambda function but users report latency issues what steps could you take to reduce the latency so for this we'll need to first check if there are any cold starts and whether you have enabled provision concurrency if latency is due to initialization time additionally you can again try optimizing your lambda function so you can either reduce the package size or optimize the code itself you can also enable caching the data if feasible so any data that can be uh, cached finally you can configure the lambda's memory allocation you know so basically increasing the memory capacity and that may help you to reduce the execution time and that in turn can help you reduce the overall latency in terms of your uh, response to the customers the next question we have is how would you share common code example any utility functions or sdk configurations across multiple lambda functions without duplicating it in each function so this is where we make use of lambda layers so whenever we are talking about making your code reusable lambda has this options called lambda layers we can use that so this will allow us to um, uh, the code and libraries to be packaged and shared across multiple lambda functions so basically uh, it's like a shared library which you can start importing in any of your lambda functions uh, layers are stored separately and uh, this enables each function to import the layer at your runtime uh, this approach will help you to minimize the size of your code uh, help you to reduce your code duplication uh, keeps the function packages smaller and also makes it much easier for us to update those uh, uh, layers which is your shared libraries the next question we have is how would you use lambda to process a batch of records from an sqs queue or kinesis stream and why might you choose batch processing over single record processing 
So AWS Lambda, it allows processing of your records in batch, either from your SQS service or from your Kinesis service. Now you can configure this Lambda function to receive your batch of records could be by uh, setting the batch size in the Lambda event source settings. Now batch processing can help you to improve the efficiency and also reduce the cost of handling multiple records within a single function invocation and that can reduce the number of executions needed. So basically with your Lambda functions you pay uh, uh, you know by, by the runtime right? based on how many times you're running the code and how many times you're invoking the Lambda function. So the more time you invoke the Lambda function the more you'll have to pay money. So that's where batch processing can help you to reduce the cost and also it improves the efficiency because you're handling a uh, large amount of data. The next question we have is how do you ensure data processed by Lambda is secure and meets compliance requirements. So first we can make use of AWS IAM service to give the least privilege access needed to your Lambda function. So let's say your Lambda needs to talk to S3 service or any other service you will need to give the uh, necessary permissions. We can leverage AWS IAM service to give those least privilege access. For any sensitive data, you can consider using AWS KMS for encrypting the data, could be encrypting your environment variables and any data which is at rest. Additionally, you can also configure VPC access. So basically the function will be uh, within the VPC and that will allow the function to interact with secure internal resources. You can also make use of CloudWatch for uh, monitoring your logs, uh, which can be used for auditing purpose. Finally, you can make use of AWS X-Ray for any traceability and monitoring to meet your compliance requirements. So any HTTP errors, how your traffic is flowing, all those things can be monitored. And that brings us to the end of our scenario based interview questions for AWS Lambda service. Again, this is a, a very commonly used service and you can expect a lot of questions from here. I hope these questions help you in your uh, interview. If you found this video helpful, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Please share your feedback in the comments section below and subscribe to the channel for more content. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.